Good morning, everybody. Charlie here with Red Summit RF, coming to you from Mount Suapoa in South Phoenix. Have you guys ever operated your radio near a commercial communication site? Have you experienced front end overload, or do you even know what it is? Find out what transceiver front end overload is and how you might mitigate it, coming up. A couple of days ago, I was listening to a Summits on the Air activator try to activate this summit right behind me, Mount Suapoa, which has a whole bunch of communication towers on it. He was calling CQ over and over again, and there were quite a few stations that were replying back to him, uh, and he was not responding back to them. He was calling CQ over and over again. The stations would reply, and he would continue calling C CQ. Obviously, he couldn't hear those stations. At one station was only six miles away and running a 19-element Yagi. Uh, I, I think it was about he was running about 50 watts. And another station was running 200 watts, a little further away. So the problem this guy was experiencing was uh, his receiver was being desensitized, or other people call it, uh, I, I think a more common word for it is transceiver uh, front end overload. I've been a victim of this front end overload issue multiple times myself. At first, I really didn't understand what was going on, but I think I've, I've come to know and understand it a little better. So today, I'm going to offer you an explanation as to what front end overload is and maybe a few ways to mitigate it. Uh, if you don't, if you want more details about it, there's a great video. I'll put a link right up here. It's from the National Telecommunications and Information Administration, and the guy uh, this does a great job of explaining what front-end overload is. So, so check that out. Like I said, right up here. In simple terms, what front-end overload is is when your receiver is trying to receive on a specific frequency. RF gets into this into the radio on an adjacent frequency somewhere else and prevents it from processing the frequency that you're trying to uh, listen to and so therefore your receiver doesn't receive that frequency that you're trying to listen to. The main reason for this is, is oftentimes manufacturers don't put a good front end or bandpass filter into the radio or even sometimes they don't even put a bandpass filter in at all and they rely on other types of things to, uh, to, to uh, narrow the band and to help you to listen to the specific frequency that you're listening to. There are a number of ways to mitigate this uh, uh, flaw in radios or, or uh, poor manufacturing of radios because of the front end. Uh, one of them is if you use a uh, single band transceiver, sometimes they're a little better than like a tri-bander. Uh, lower gain antennas always work a little better. There are a few things that you can do to mitigate, but what I'm going to talk about today is placing a external uh, bandpass filter in line with your radio to your antenna. And that's a great way to ensure that you uh, knock down that, uh, that uh, adjacent RF noise that uh, causes your, your radio receiver to be desensitized. So before we get into that though, I am going to try to show you the spectrum here up on this, on this uh, summit or near the summit. I'm about 900 feet away from the, from the summit. I have a tiny SA spectrum analyzer. I'm going to pull it out and at that distance I think we'll be okay. Got to be careful not to uh, uh, fry the front end of the uh, spectrum analyzer. So I'm going to put a uh, attenuator in there and we're far enough away from that from that closest antenna which is about 900 feet that I think we'll be okay but I'm gonna inch closer watch watch cl uh, walk closer and uh, see how the uh, how the uh, RF signal comes into the uh, spectrum analyzer and hopefully I can give you a good idea of what we're looking at here on the on the uh, tiny SA all right so in the truck here as you can see here's the tiny SA I'm gonna pull that out we're gonna use that I'm gonna take the pin off there I already took it off and then We'll use this antenna right here with that. But now I need to get the pad over here. Um, this is Dan, KC7MSU, lent me his. So let me pull these out and get back with you. Okay, so you're probably gonna have a really hard time seeing this. I didn't realize it was gonna be so sunny, but here's the antenna connected to the uh, pad and then the pad goes into the tiny SA. I'm gonna try to get in here and zoom in and see if we can give you a look. All right, it might be hard for you to see, but uh, at least, at the very least, what you can see here is uh, a bunch of signals. There's a one there, and then there's several others. Let's see if I can get over here and on my finger here. So there's this one, and then a bunch of over right here that are, are really, really pretty strong signals. 
Uh, as you can see at the top, it says that it's, a, it's around 101 megahertz, which really, that, that strongest signal is, is pretty close to the 144 to 146 megahertz that we're uh, dealing with. You can see it says up there at the top, it's 38, 37 uh, dBm. Okay, I've moved in about a couple hundred feet. As you can see, the, actually, the, uh, the uh, dBs, dBms is actually more now. If I can get it to focus, it's 42. It's, it's fluctuated up to 47, or down to 47, I guess I should say. dBm, uh, same frequency and everything, but... Uh, uh, maybe it's because I'm I'm actually going a little bit further away to to arrive at the uh, the tower that I'm I'm looking at. So I'm, there's several towers here. I'm not quite sure why as I'm walking down the road, it's uh, the DB is going down. But I mean that's good. I'm gonna keep walking here, and uh, we'll we'll get closer with this uh, tiny SA, and we'll see what the signal what what happens with the signal. I might end up walking all the way up to the uh, activation zone and getting a reading there. <sighs> okay. I'm actually in the activation zone now. I followed the tiny SA readings all the way up. Haven't changed much, so I turned it off as I took this last little climb up. Right here, here's the fence line. And it, this is pretty much the only spot that you can activate this summit, is right here along this fence line. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, look at the tiny SA now. Well, it's kind of hard again, this, this uh, doesn't focus very good, but as you can see, we're still right around 40 dB, which is kind of strange. It's not really what I expected. Uh, it's the same as it is up at the car. And so I would have expected it to be lower than that uh, by now in the activation zone, but that's, that at least tells us something and those same artifacts are still there. So I'm gonna go back to the truck and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Not sure what we got going on here. All right, looks like the PD motor unit's here to take a picture or something. All right, well, so I'm gonna explain here. I actually, I can't explain why the uh, the decibel rating, uh, the DBMs was equivalent or maybe even a little higher up next to the antenna towers, other than Possibly uh, over there, uh, it's a different antenna that doesn't have, and so I'm actually further away than you know. I'm not quite sure which of these antennas has, has is uh, sending that 100 megahertz signal, um, but maybe it's more line of sight. I'm not sure. Uh, but what I will say is, either here or over in the activation zone, we're looking at at uh, a frequency of 100 megahertz and then on the other side 162 megahertz of a very strong signals and they're obviously what's causing the uh, the front end overload uh, and it's just as severe here as it will be in the activation zone so with that I'm gonna go ahead and get over there to the activation zone see if I can uh, test out these uh, bandpass filters oh boy as you saw we've got a whole crew of motor cops I, I get a little nervous sometimes I mean you know, we operate in a lot of different places, but sometimes I get a little hesitant and nervous to operate near big tower structures like this with law enforcement around because <laughs> I don't want to be approached. You know they're going to ask what's going on. Maybe they won't. I hope they don't. I hope they just ignore me, but there is that chance, I guess. So I'm going to get up there. We'll, we'll start with the... Uh, well, like I was saying earlier, you got to be in that zone in order to activate that summit so and the thing is I'm gonna I'm gonna start with a gain antenna and that's what I'm gonna use the whole time I mentioned that was one way in which you could reduce the uh, friend and interference but you know if you're up there and uh, you don't have a gain antenna then you're not gonna be able to reach as many people so you go down to a rubber duck you don't get as many people and but you still you might get some a little bit of interference well that doesn't help anything. I want to be able to use a gain antenna to reach more people. So the way we do that is with a uh, bandpass filter. I can still use the gain antenna, I think. We'll find out. With that bandpass filter, and not only do I get the, the few that I would normally get without, but I can even get more because it really knocks down those, those uh, frequencies on either side. So 
we are going to start with just the gain antenna and I will demonstrate that I can't hear anybody which I've already done before in the past on this summit and then we'll start working through the three different bandpass filters that I have and I'll explain each of them in, in, uh, in, in briefly There they go. Okay, so here's the antenna. I'm, like I said, it's just a roll-up uh, J-pole I got strung up there. Of course, you can see the towers all around me, and uh, that interference, I'm sure, is going to play a role definitely in uh, in uh, getting this on the air. So let's go with it, though. Okay, one more thing to explain. What I'm going to do is run two uh, of these FT60Rs. Run both of these. One I'm just going to use as a receiver. Uh, with a rubber duck just so that we can kind of see what's going on uh, If we can hear anything uh, Where we might not be able to with the gain antenna So one of these I'll put the uh, rubber duck on the other one I'm going to connect to the gain antenna We'll probably hear something out of this one and we won't out of this one at least at first All right. Well, we've got the first set back of the day. I guess I won't be using this one as a receiver I didn't bring the stock antenna and I have a problem with this this it's all bent I can't get the antenna on it so we'll just have to go with it all right we have uh, been spotted we have uh, no attenuation uh, no uh, bandpass filter and so let's see what happens we've got to uh, we'll turn this up we've got the gate this down let's call CQ 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 November Juliet 7 Victor CQ, 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 November Juliet, 7 Victor. CQ, 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 November Juliet, 7 Victor. CQ, 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 Soda, November Juliet, 7 Victor. CQ, 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 CQ Soda, CQ Soda, November Juliet, 7 Victor. Anybody out there? This is no attenuation. I can't hear anybody so far. November Juliet, 7 Victor, come back, please. November Juliet, 7 Victor on a, uh, a roll-up Slim Jim, uh, gain antenna, no attenuation, no... Uh, no uh, inline uh, bandpass filter. I'm uh, looking for any station. Come back now. November Juliet, 7 Victor, CQ, CQ. CQ, CQ, November Juliet, 7 Victor. Anybody there? I know somebody's there. In fact, it looks like somebody just texted me and said they're there. All right, uh, that. Oh, let's see. Try one more time. CQ Soda, CQ Soda, November Juliet, 7 Victor. Anybody there? All right, so it looks like we're going to be uh, not going to get anybody on this gain antenna. Now let's put it in. Let's put the, uh, the first uh, bandpass filter in. Okay, I have an even worse problem. Shoot. <laughs> ah, I, uh, I don't have... The right connector look it's uh i took off this and i thought oh yeah i can just uh, put it uh, in line here like this and uh see i thought i was going to be able to do that uh i need a mail to mail dang it all right well let me just work the guys then on uh, uh get this activated and we'll go to a different summit and, and do these uh so all right let's Let's uh, just get the rubber duck up here and see what we can do. <laughs> see? See, look. Watch this. Anybody there? Nothing, right? With the gain. With the rubber duck. 
All right, uh, Whiskey 7 United Sugar Alpha, NJ7V, your 5.9, uh, with a rubber duck. I don't have the right connector for the attenuators. Uh, I can't believe it, but uh, your 5.9. Uh, who'd you go back to, Charlie? USA? USA. Okay, Charlie, yeah, there's five or six guys on frequency here. You're 5 and 9, Charlie, over. All right, thank you. 5 and 9 as well. Thanks, Ray. Uh, ne go next. KC7, MSU. Whiskey 7, Juliet Echo Tango. Uh, next loudest is uh, KC7 MSU, your 5-9. Five 5-9, nine. Five nine, Charlie. Unit 3 abuse. Whiskey 7, Juliet Echo Tango. Whiskey, uh, Juliet, uh, <laughs> W7 JET, and Brian, your 5-9. USL, also 5-9. 3BZ, 5-9. And 3BZ, your 5-9 as well. And 7 AMA. And 7 AMA, your 5-9. You're also 5-9. Uh, W7RV, you're 5-5. Five five. Okay, QSL, Charlie. Just to uh, let you know, uh, the first time I called you uh, three or four times at the 100 watt level, so, uh, and uh, uh, you didn't hear anybody, so whatever that was, uh, uh, what you got now works a lot better. Yeah, roger that. And you're 5-9 now. 5-9, uh, Tommy. Thank you. Roger. NK3H. N3KH, you're 5-9. You are too. Thanks, Charlie. No cop. WA7 JTM. WA7 JTM 55. KB reports, Pete. WA7 JTM. WA7 JTM 55 55 55. I'm going to call it a few times, so maybe move around here. Uh, WA7 JTM 55 55 55. Maybe a uh, short duck. Yeah, he's using a rubber duck. Uh, try it again, Pete. Uh, he's here and you're just fine. Yeah, I can't hear it. So, like right beneath you, there's something that you're trying to talk to, which, which is all part of the experiment. WA7 JTM 55. We just called you again. I heard you break the squelch. That's it, Charlie. I'm moving around. I'm moving around to WA7 JTM 55 55. Yeah, he's moving around for you. Just, yeah, next say nothing. I uh, hear you earlier when you were. Uh, Brian was being overloaded. But, uh... All right. Well, WA7 JTM, Mike, no copy. All right, anybody else out there? CQ, CQ, November Juliet, 7 Victor. AA7PS, 5-9. AA7PS, 5-9 as well, thank you. Anybody else? CQ, CQ, November Juliet, 7 Victor. NJ7V, WA7JTM. WA7JTM, NJ7V, 55, 55, 55. Yeah, Roger, you're 5 and 5. Yeah, I uh, wouldn't hear you at all before. I'm on the horizontal here now, and you're about 4 or 5 S units. So, uh, yeah, whatever you changed, the signal went way down, but I, you couldn't hear me the other way. Yep, that was it. Okay, cool. Thanks. Uh, th uh, this is November Juliet, 7 Victor, uh, QRZ. Kilo India 7, Quebec Echo Kilo. Kilia India 7, Quebec India Kilo, is that right? Quebec Echo Kilo, Kiwi K. Oh. B, KF7 NB. Sometimes you're uh, readable, and sometimes you're in the noise, Charlie. Uh, all right, Kiwi K, you're 5959. Five, all right, thanks for the 59, you're 59 as well. All right, Burke, I'm going to walk around. Uh, K, K, uh, KF7 MP, walking around. Uh, uh, do you copy? Do you copy? You're a 59. KF7 MP 5959, 59, KF7 MP 5959. 59. There, you're 5 and 2 on that one. Okay, copy 5 and 2, thank you. Okay, guys, with the magic of video editing, two hours has passed. I went down to Pete, W7J, WA7JTM's house, got this connector, and made it back up. So let's go ahead and resume. So we already looked at what uh, the uh, gain antenna looks like, uh, what it sounds like when there is no uh, filters put into it. You, you pretty much can't hear anybody, even somebody who's sending 100 watts, somebody who's within six miles. It's just, I didn't hear anybody. So the next step is to uh, try this uh, first bandpass filter. So, so this per first bandpass filter is the uh, GPIO Labs. The problem with this one is there's really no use that I can think of where you could use a bandpass filter that you can only transmit one watt and it only has a, 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 a dB uh, attenuation of 
or it only has an attenuation of 3 dB or less. So we're going to give it a shot anyway, uh, so I don't burn this up because there may be a use that I can find for it later. What I'm going to do, I've got it turned on, and I'm going to go ahead and, tr and use the other radio that I have here. It's just like it to transmit on the rubber duck, but I'm going to listen on this frequency and see. So I'm going to turn the volume down on this one. Just use it for transmitter. Receive on this one. Let's see if what we can find out. CQ Soda, CQ Soda, NJ70. KC7 MSU NJ7V, you're 5.9 with uh, the uh, first man pass filter. Great, you're also 5.9 down Chandler. Alright, here we go. N7AMA. N7AMA NJ7V, 5.9. You're also 5.9, Charlie. I guess it's a lot easier. Is he anything in line with that thing, or uh, he's going with a rubber duck? Yeah, this is a gain antenna this time, and I've got a 3 dB. A attenuator or a 3 dB bandpass filter. All right. Well, it looks like it's working. Roger that. All right. Uh, anybody else out there? NJ7B. WB8ZXU. WB8ZXU. Uh, you're a 5.9. You're also 5.9. November Juliet 7 Victor QRZ. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, it's a lot easier to do There's somebody else in there, but they're, not, but they're pretty weak. I don't hear Ray, but I'll go down to another uh, tenu uh, another uh, bandpass filter here in just a second. Whiskey Alpha 7, Juliet. Alpha Alpha 7, Papa Sierra. All right, uh, we, uh, Alpha Alpha 7, Papa Sierra, you're 5'9". You're Alpha 5'9, you're only up for anything. Glad you're doing this afternoon. Thank you, 73. Uh, WA7, JTM, you're 5'9". Roger, WA7, JTM, you're 59. I'll look at my answer later when you have to switch out. Oh yeah, that's great. That'll be useful. All right, uh, anybody else uh, before I switch over to the next band? November Juliet, 7 Victor. N3BZ, mobile, 5858, five, eight, you're 5959. Five, All right, so there you have it. I actually <laughs> mistakenly just went ahead and transmitted on this thing anyway. Uh, the manufacturer says 1 dB and I sent 5 through it and it seemed to work. Maybe I broke it. Maybe I blew it up. Maybe I did. I don't know. This is the, uh, what do they call it? Let me look at the thing here. It's a uh, Hobby PCB. Let me turn the Hobby PCB, 50, wa 50 dB attenuation on this one. So it's a significantly more attenuation. Here we go. Let's see what we can get on this one. CQ Soda, November Juliet, 7 Victor, 50 dB attenuation. CQ Soda, CQ Soda, NJ7V, calling CQ. Okay, 7 MSU, I don't know if it'll help you out, Charlie, but uh, I can give you from the same station. Maybe you can tell a little bit of a difference in KC7 MSU. Yeah, there's a little bit, uh, you're not quite as uh, strong a signal coming in, but I still got you. All right, great, you're still 5-9 here. Roger that, thank you. Uh, November Juliet, 7 Victor, QRZ. Okay, I hear a station in there. I think it was AA7PS, but I'm not sure. Is that right? Okay, you're significantly down. You're probably a f uh, four by two, four by two. So uh, maybe this uh, this particular um, bandpass filter isn't the greatest because you are really a, a, a true five nine earlier. Okay, thank you, AA7PS. Thank you, seventy three. Anybody else out there? November Juliet, 7 Victor, anybody? Yeah, I don't think this, uh, this attenuator here is, uh, I, I was down on the other one, but it seemed to work better than this one. November Juliet, 7 Victor, sounds like this bandpass filter isn't the greatest. Let me uh, call one more time and then I'll go to the, uh, the uh, Soda Beams 70 dB one. November Juliet, 7 Victor, QRZ. Hmm. All right, not hearing anybody. All right, let's uh, switch it over then one more time. Going over to the uh, Soda Beam 70 dB. Uh, stand by, November Juliet, 7 Victor. All right, here's the Soda Beam's uh, bandpass filter. All of these have been two meter bandpass filters. This one is rated at 70 dB. And uh, looks like I've got a motorcycle driver. Uh, 70 dB, 
and it's the most expensive by far of all the, the bandpass filters of the three. Uh, first one I did was $20, the second one $40. This one was, with shipping, it was almost $80. I was $60 to $70, somewhere in there, a little under $80. So uh, let's give it a shot. Yeah, it was probably a, a white tail. And uh, I left it. I thought about taking it home. About a year old, I figured. NJ7B. All right, CQ Soda, CQ Soda. Hey, Pete, I uh, hear you there, uh, WA7JTM. You're 5'9", five 5'9 nine, five nine plus maybe even. Okay, yeah, you're down from what you were before by a uh, number of issues, and uh, you, you could not hear me uh, with the other attenuator, even with 200 watts. Just, you know, you couldn't hear me no matter what I did, so there you go. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, with this one, you're, uh, you're coming in strong. I, I don't know, maybe the trade-off's worth it because, uh, yeah, uh, I'm transmitting with a little bit uh, less, uh, I, I, probably because of the insertion loss, but at the same time, I'm able to hear you, uh, you, you know, very, very strongly. Yeah, so you're, you're a S9 on this one, you were over S9 on the other two, both of them. In fact, the one that, uh, the last you had on, you're even a little bit higher uh, than the first one, so this, this is the weakest of them all, but you are hearing me, and that's the difference. Yeah, and I'm hearing you the strongest of all three. So there you go, yeah, this is barefoot. I don't have the big, uh, I don't I'm just running the uh, the uh, 736 barefoot. Okay, good news. All right, let me uh, move on and see if there's anybody else out there, uh, Pete. Uh, this is November Juliet, 7 Victor, QRZ. N3BZ Mobile 57. N3BZ Mobile 59. N3BZ, do you copy? You're, I copy 57, you are 59. Roger, Roger, the pod 9, QSL. 73, November Juliet, 7 Victor, QRZ. Whiskey 7, United Sugar Alpha, Alpha Mobile, you are going to be a 4, no, 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 5 by 3, 5 by 3, 5 by 3, over. Roger that, yeah, that's uh, that's about right. That's uh, It says that the insertion loss is about 3 dB, so that sounds about right. Thank you, uh, have fun up there, up north there, uh, Ray. Alpha Alpha 7 Papa Sierra, testing with you, Charlie. Oh, great. Alpha Alpha 7 Papa Sierra, you're almost full quieting. You are strong, not 5'9. Alpha 5'9 Northeast Mesa. Roger that. Thank you. 73. CQ Soda, November Juliet, 7 Victor, QRZ. Uh, comparison there, Charlie. You're 5'9. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry there, Dan. I, over, I uh, uh, transmitted over the top of you. Come again. Uh, one more for you, Charlie. You're All right, you sound the best of all of the uh, of the three attenuators. This or the uh, bad pass filters. This one's the best. Thank you. Uh, five nine as well. Seventy three. Uh, CQ soda. CQ soda. NJ seven V calling CQ. Kilo India seven Quebec Echo Kilo. Kilo India seven Quebec and uh, Echo Kilo. There you are again. Yeah, you're five by five. Sorry, not five by seven. Five by seven. Over. All right, copy the five seven. You're about a five seven as well. This morning I was using. Yeah, kind of makes sense. Great. Okay, well, thanks. Uh, we'll talk to you again. 73. 73. November Juliet 7, Victor QRZ. Okay, so for the first one, it was the GPIO Labs. $20 uh, with a 3 dB uh, attenuation. And you're not supposed to put more than 1 watt through this thing. I put 5 watts through it, and it was uh, performed relatively well. Um, I don't know, I mean, for $20, <laughs> I think I might continue using this until it burns up. But uh, I wasn't impressed with this when I heard the specs, but I am much more uh, impressed with it now. This one, on the other hand, uh, this hobby uh, PCB, maybe I had the connections wrong or something, but this one I only uh, uh, paid $40 for, it's so a little more than, more than this one, but uh, the expectation I had from this was pretty high because it had a 50 dB rating and a 0 0.0 insertion loss. And it, as it turns out, I could only reach one or two, three maybe stations on this one. Uh, they all heard me, just like they did on the other one. So the transmit isn't a problem, but the receive on, on this one was great. On this one was pretty poor. And then of course the soda beams, uh, which I still have hooked up to the radio, the soda beams. Uh, 
well, you get what you pay for, I guess, right? Uh, $60 or so. I, I, I'll put the price up on all, on all three of these and let you know what the price is. But this one, while it did have a 3 dB uh, insertion loss, that was a great trade-off, I think, for, especially if you're using a, a gain antenna, uh, for being able to overcome that uh, front end uh, desensitizing and get a receive all of those uh, stations. They all still heard me. They said they all reported that I dropped in uh, in uh, signal strength by, by about um, 3 dB. But at the same time, I was able to hear everybody I needed to hear, and it was uh, actually the the of the receivers. This one worked the best. So there you go. Uh, there are some options for you uh, if you're working near a a, a commercial communication site and you want to um, do soda near there. Uh, be, be aware that one way to get around it is, like I demonstrated before, you can go down and gain, just use a rubber duck instead of a gain antenna, and that should work. If that still doesn't work, then you can use one of these uh, bandpass filters. And another th thing that you could do is, is, of course, get a better radio, a radio with a better front end. All of those might help you. But uh, with that, I think I'm just going to close it out. I would say, like to say thank you to everybody for joining me on this video. And thank you for uh, your support for my channel. I appreciate it. And so I will catch you on the next one. So I'll say 73 to you and have a good one. Bye.